Oh, 
to celebrate. Open your mouth and let's celebrate. I said, open your mouth and let's celebrate. shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. I'm going to say that again. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Would you help me just for a moment to thank the Lord for the life of this great man of God? With the exception of the family, can we rest on our feet? Pastor A.D. Lenoir. We just want to take a moment to set the atmosphere of our gathering today. We understand the word of God. David told us to bless the Lord at all times and Job then picked it up and said, the Lord gives and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And Job and David spoke to us. They were not telling us that we had to praise him because of the circumstance. But he was saying that we ought to learn how to praise him in the circumstance. I just want to know if I can find about 200 people that gathered this afternoon that can praise him in spite of. That can thank God for his great servant, I want you to help me lift this up. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Could you elevate your voice? And all that is with Bless his soul. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Can we sing it again and lift our voice? Come on. All over the sanctuary. Could you help me? Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all that is within me. Elevate your hands and worship just for a moment. We bless his name. Even in times like these, we can testify that he's done great things. Come on. Come on, elevate your voice. He has done. In spite of what we're going through, he has. Won't you bless? Bless his holy. Bless his holy name. We're going to do it one more time. Those of you that feel like worshiping and standing, just help us elevate it. He has done great things. He has done great things. In spite of what we feel, he has. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. He has done great things. Why don't you bless? Bless his soul. Bless his holy name. I want you to do me a favor. Clap your hands and open your mouth and give the Lord a great praise in this place. Amen. We're certainly glad that you all are here to celebrate a life worth celebrating. I'm going to try it again. We're here to celebrate a life worth celebrating. We thank you, Bishop Cooper. Brothers and sisters, we are here to do three things. We're here to remember a life that was lived. We're here to comfort one another. Amen. And thirdly and lastly, we're here to consider our own immortality in the face of death. Amen. And so we're here to do just that. And I want to say this right off bat. We're here to make this lighter, not heavier, for the family. Amen. And I believe we have enough preachers in here to do just that. Amen. Amen. It's Pastor Cecil Lamb here. If not, I'm going to ask the moderator of the Seaboard Association to come and give us our invocation. And he has to make it back down south by 4 o'clock. And I want him to do his ecclesiastic remarks while he um, do the invocation. That's right. Is that fair? Amen. Amen. Come on, Pastor Alfonso Jackson. Homestead. However, I needed to be here uh, today. Um, Lemoir was a, a great brother, and he was a friend. I mean, I don't, I don't have the socks that he had. Amen. But we, um, he didn't let me play in his sock game. Amen. But I loved him. Our association loved him. And there will be an empty seat at the table for him. Pray for the family. I pray for his wife and for his children and for the Westview family, his biological family, his friends and loved ones. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Paul said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. I believe Brother Limwa has gained. I believe that death has given him rest. I believe that get death has given him release. I believe that death has relocated him. And I believe that death has rewarded him. And oh, what I'm waiting for is the reunion that all God's children get together. What a time, what a time, what a time. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we come now at this appointed place, at this appointed time, as with many cases like this, we feel like it's just too soon. But our lives are in your hand. You determine the length of days that we are to live upon this earth. We trust you, God, and we trust that your will must be done. We know, oh God, that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. So God, now we come and we beseech you to have mercy upon his loved ones. I pray now that we don't just show up to the home going, but for somebody to help look out after the family, that even when this service is over, I pray that more than an offering, more than an act of benevolence, but 
some brother would stand up and help raise his son, that some woman would help his wife raise a daughter. I pray now, God, that there'll be no lack in their lives. I pray now, God, that there'll be college funds. I pray now, God, that all of their needs will be met. I pray today, God, that you will have mercy upon them now. God, be with us in this service. I pray for the man that will bring the message today. Bless Brother Whipple today and give him, give him, uh, give him peace and power to proclaim your word today. God, we commit this service to you today. We invoke your presence here now. We claim it now. It is in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Somebody clap those hands and give God some praise in this place. Oh, come on and magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Amen. We come to lift him up. How many on the Lord's side today? That's what I want to ask. How many of you today are on the Lord's side? If you're on the Lord's side, I need you to clap your hands. Let's have some church in here. Can we have some church? You can't have church. I need you to get up and act like you at your church.
There's one thing we all knew. We knew whose side Lenoir was on. He was on the Lord's side. Am I right about it? Listen, amen, before the scripture reading, I must do this, amen. The family will have me thank the Antioch Church and Pastor Art Jackson III for allowing them to celebrate um, Pastor A.D. Lenoir here this um, um, afternoon. Come on, let's give God praise for the Antioch family and the most esteemed, efficient, effective um, pastor, Pastor Arthur Jackson III. I have discovered, brothers and sisters, in times like these, we don't possess the necessary vocabulary to comfort one another. That's why I love the word of God. So we thank God for the scripture reading. For the word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. They that love the word, love the law, they have great peace and nothing shall offend them. Am I right about it? At this time, we're going to have scripture reading the Old and New Testament. The Old Testament will be read by Reverend Lorenzo Johnson. The New Testament will be read by Dr. Tracy McLeod. Now, your programs probably read different than mine. We had some changes, and this is, amen, the family request. Amen. We're not here, amen, for us, but we're here to celebrate life. And we're here for this family. Amen? In that order. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we all shall be glad and rejoice. Jumping up and down, running around the church. God has woke you up one more time. Thanks be to God. I want to say to the Lemoine family, you have my full condolence. Lemoine was a, a chief in my organization called Community Youth Against Violence, and he played an important role, and we're going to miss him. Thanks to you for the time that we had with him. Thank you. I'll be reading you, read from the Old Testament, an old familiar word where we stand for the reading of God's word. And I heard somebody said that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh us to lie down in green pastures. He restore our soul. He leadeth inside the still water. He restores our soul. He leadeth us into a path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, he have walked through the valley and the shadow of death. We will feel no evil. For thy are with us. Thy rod, thy staff, they come with us. Thy patero, prepare a table before us in the presence of our minds. Enemy, thy, ordered, thy anointed my head with oil, our cup running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all, all the days of our lives. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. To God be the glory. All right. I said to God be the glory. All right. The great things he has done. Put those hands together and give God praise for he is worthy to be. opportunity to read for my brother and for all of you that are out and watching today. Lenoir was a great friend of mine as well. We worked together uh, not only in the school system but we co-labored together and it's good to be here and to see all the loved ones that are here. I'm going to read a simple verse that we are very familiar with excuse me because in my age I'm getting a little older now and so my eyes are not as great as they used to be. Amen. All right. So we'll look at John 14th chapter. Very familiar passage. Beginning at the first verse. It's to the comfort of the family. Let not 
your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way, you know. To God be the glory. I've read for you the verses, the 14th chapter of John. May peace be with you and guide you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we're going to the country on this one, y'all. I know some of them, y'all didn't move on who's on the Lord's side, but this one we're going to the country on. Amen. Somebody say you fight on. Somebody else say you fight on. Now, like I told you, I need y'all to act like y'all in y'all church and get up and clap your hands at me. Come on, put your hands together. Everybody clap your own hands. Come on, come on, everybody clap your own hands. Come on, come on, everybody clap your own hands. Come on, come on, everybody clap your own hands. Oh, you fight on.
Pastor A.D. Lenoir, all the senior pastors, amen, remain standing, all the ministers, ministers, all clergy, please stand, amen. We thank you so much for being here, amen, we thank you for supporting this family. You may be seated, amen. Um, just before Pastor Smith come to facilitate um, our reflections, amen, if you um, ask to come up, I'm asking you very humbly, Amen. Very humbly, amen. Do not bother the family to stand, amen. Allow them to sit, amen. Again, we're here to make it lighter on them. I'm also asking, amen, if you're on program, amen, just do what you're supposed to do on program, amen. No time to put a song in there, no time to put a poem in there, amen. If they wanted you to do that, they would ask you to do that, amen. Uh, I'm a nice guy, amen. I'm just here serving the family. Let us do things decent and in order, amen. That makes sense to me, amen. 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 So Gaston, Pastor Gaston, E. Smith is coming, amen, to um, help me navigate this traffic, amen. Come on, to God be the glory. Come on, you can do better than that. To God, to God, to God be the glory. Help me thank God for this life, this legacy, this love, this laughter. Help me thank God for the leadership. Dr. A.D. Lenoir. God bless you to Pastor Thompson, our officiant, and to Bree and the children and to all of the family uh, that share on today. The family has left specific uh, directions and uh, if you can see the line before remarks we do have uh, two sets of reflections that we're working with today but we're going to start with those that are listed in the printed program uh, the line before the names say limit your reflections to two minutes two minutes two and uh, we want to do our very best to honor this family I know that it's not easy uh, but we want to do our very best to honor this family. I'm going to ask that all that are speaking today would come all at one time to the podium to my right. Uh, as a co-worker, uh, Dr. Lucinda Moore will come. As a daughter, Miss Sinai Lenoir will come. Lenai, Sinai, you can stay there until your time, sweetheart. Uh, as a cousin, Tiffany Lenoir will come. As a neighbor, Mr. Leon Harris will come. And then as I knew him, the Reverend Lorenzo Johnson. Uh, very simply, when the music starts playing, that's your cue to bring it on in. Amen. 
Put your hands together for our first speaker. Come on, let's do that. Good afternoon. To the pastor of this great church, to the presiding pastor and pulpit guests, the Lenoir family and guests. In this season of my life, a wise man reminded me of a quote from Dr. Martin Luther King. It says, in the end, we will not remember the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. Anyone who knew Dr. Lenoir knew that he was far from a silent friend. Silence was never his thing. Each morning as he arrived to Medi's KA Preparatory Academy, Lenoir would reach out to each individual, each radio holder individually, making sure he took attendance and evaluated everyone's mental states. He would ask each person how they, would do, how they were doing, and he would end with, let's make it a great day. He greeted each student with music and dancing, so much so that the teachers complained that the kids were too hyped first thing in the morning. The man with the three-piece suit, that's what the parents referred to him as. Each day he would come to work as though he was dressed to perform his first sermon. He spoke to the faculty and staff members as though he were the big brother that we needed and the father that we never had. Dr. Linwar prepared the way for the ladies of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Gamma Zeta Omega Chapter making sure that we were able to feed over 100 students each weekend. The man who would go in my office, eat my lunch, and say to me that he saved me a little bit. <laughs> Known to the school community as my right-hand man, he stood with me during the toughest times of my principalship. When my sister passed away, and my stepmother tragically were murdered, Linwar stood with me and my family. When I transitioned from ITEC to Mady Ives as the principal, Linwar stood with me. When an office staff member lost her son, Linwar stood with me as we com comforted the family. When a student at Mady Ives was accidentally killed, Linwar stood with me. And just recently, when our beloved coach passed away, Lenoir stood with us. So on this occasion, we have to support the family. He told me every time that we would go somewhere, he would say, Lashinda, don't start that crying. Do not come here starting that crying. So I would roll my eyes at him and desperately hold back the tears. So Bree, Antoine Jr., Sinai, Shiloh, Sion, Mama Lenoir, and Grandma Lenoir, we stand with you today. If there was one last thing that I had to say to Lenoir, I would say to him, thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road and back again. Your heart is true. You're a pal and a confidant. And if we threw a party and we invited everyone you knew, you would see that the biggest gift would be for me. And the card attached would say, thank you for being my friend. Good evening, everyone. Oh, good afternoon, my bad, sorry. Good afternoon. Um, before I would say what I have to say, I just want to thank my mom because she stood by my dad his whole time, Pastor, and I really appreciate that. They were married for 20 years. Um, it would have been 21, August 14th. I 
I am here today to talk about Antoine Dwayne Lenore Sr., a pastor, a husband, a father, and a community activist. I come like most today, living the unimaginable, seeing someone like this gone. I never thought you would leave so soon, Dad. I remember having a conversation with my father about death, and he told me how much he despised it. I couldn't agree more in what I'm dealing with today. Seeing you here, Dad, like this takes everything away from me, my spirit, soul, and my heart. Despite the fact that I know you're no longer with us, I am here standing up for you today, knowing that there is a God and he will make a way. In the Bible, Psalms chapter 23, verse 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall feel no, fear no evil, for you are with me, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. My dad was not a fearful man. He walked the walk, talked the talk, and never stopped serving the Lord. My daddy spread the word the best he could. He would send these, these quotes to everybody in his phone every day. He did not mind what others said because he had God, his wife, and his children. And he was fine with that. There's so much to say about him, but I will mention a few of our memories. I remember when we were kids, he made a way for Shiloh to spell her name. He was jumping up, clapping, and we was dancing to the beat. When I first started driving, he was scared. <laughs> he was swearing up and down that I was going to crash the car. But then after a while, he trusted me. When me and my dad would have our own one-on-one -on -one talks about everything, anything. And lastly, my dad having all his kids grow up in the church so we could learn the word of God. <laughs> he wanted Christ to stay with us and within us. Daddy, I am sure you want your four children to grow and blossom into the people that you wanted us to be. As I go on and my three other siblings, your legacy will carry on with us and we will make you a proud dad. I know you will want us to carry it with pride and dignity. Dad, it's hard for me to let you go, but God has you now and it is better than anything I could give you. I really appreciate the ones who were close to my dad. The ones who called him, worked for him, and the ones who acknowledged him while he was here. We will all have this pain in our heart for the rest of our lives. <clears throat> Daddy, I will miss you for the rest of my life. There is no other man like you. I love you, Daddy. I will see you later. Thank you, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. First, giving honor to God um, for bringing us here on this special occasion. Um, okay, I'll start. Um, I'm Pastor Lenoir's um, cousin, next in line. We're 13 months apart. Some may think, call it like Irish twins. I'm an only child, but I grew up oftentimes hanging around my aunt and my family, and I was always at my auntie's house. So one of the earliest memories that I have for Pastor Lenoir, as you all know him, but we know him as Tuan, 
Um, just like that young boy who was singing Fighting On, that was Antoine. <laughs> we were very young, about eight years old or so, and he would get myself, his younger sister Patrice, his younger brother D at the time. Kisha wasn't here yet, but um, we would walk blocks to our great grandmother's church and praise God because that's just who Antoine was. Um, he had a love for God that all knew him, and he's very special to our family, and I know he's special to each and every one here that showed up today. Um, so when I got the news, I was on my way driving, and I was definitely devastated and heartbroken. Um, I sent a text to his baby sister because we were sharing time with each other, reminiscing on the good times, and you know, just being in our moment. And this is what I said. I am devastated and heartbroken that our beloved king is no longer with us in flesh. He departed too soon. However, he has been assigned to join the spiritual world with our heavenly father to do the unimaginable. He once said that dying was easy and living was hard, and I hope this is true. I asked God why he was taken so violently when he was a gentle giant who wouldn't hurt anyone. I like to think of him as something like Jesus, who was pierced in his hide and sacrificed for us, his family, all of us included, Bree, his beautiful children, my aunt, his grandmother, all of us and extended family members. In his memory, we must support each other. My phone. In his memory, we must support each other and love as he did. God is all-knowing and the creator of all, and he now has a devoted servant in heaven. If one thing is sure, we need to spend time with God and create a personal relationship with him, as Pastor Lenoir did. We should practice living by the fruits of the Spirit and all of the biblical guidance Tuan preached to many of us. It has been a true honor and blessing to watch him grow to the outstanding man who took care of everyone and everything. This is not the end though, but it says, to God be the glory. I haven't heard the music yet, so I have something else I'd like to share. <laughs> oh, there it is. To God be the glory. Harris, are you present? Good afternoon, everyone. I just wanted to give you guys a little background of uh, how I knew Antoine. Um, he was my next door neighbor. But before that, uh, we used to work together at a place called Red Cap. Um, I came on, uh, he was already there. So he kind of took me under his wing and introduced himself and uh, just showed me how everything goes. So he gave me his number and said, anything I can, he can help me out with, just let him know. So one day after a few months went by, I got into a I noticed uh, because Red Cap is like a, uh, like Uber. Um, you have an app on your phone and you answer it. That's how you get your calls. So one day, I noticed the app on my phone. It was not. I wasn't getting any jobs. So I called and tried to find out what was going on, but I got no answers. So I remembered Antoine. So I called him up and I asked him. Are you getting work? Are you getting jobs? And he was like, yeah, my, my app is working fine. So I'm like, well, something isn't right. So he was like, don't worry, I got you. Let me go see what's going on. So I'm saying, how is he going to help me? He's just a worker. Like he, you know. So the next day, my app started going off. I'm getting all the work. And I called him up, and I was like, what, what happened? What did you do? So he, he said, I told you, I got you. So I, he never told me what he did, but he talked to somebody up higher and, and 
to get my app back on. I know I did something that I wasn't supposed to do at the job at the time, but I just didn't know what it was. So it's, uh, you know, he just knew people and he got things done. So, and then um, after that, I went on to become, I got my CDLs and I started driving trucks for a living. So I left the job and um, a few years later, we lost contact with each other. And my wife and myself bought a house and we noticed um, he was our neighbor and I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, you know, I'm meeting Antoine again. And he told me that um, he's the pastor of the church across the street. So I'm like, you're a pastor? You know, all this time I've been knowing him, he never told me he was a pastor. And all I can think about is all the times where all the profanity I was using, you know, around him. I'm like, oh my God, this is, this is a pastor, you know. But um, I guess that's my time. So, so I mean, I'm two, I'm two minutes came fast. But I had so much to say about him, but he was a good soul. And um, I thank God for him. And, and, and to the family, I'm here for you guys, uh, Bree and the kids, you know, whatever you need. And I'm not just saying that. You know, my wife and myself will be here for you. Anything, anything you guys need, just let us know. Thank you, everybody. Reverend Mike Davis is going to come uh, instead of the Reverend Lorenzo Johnson. Good evening. To this Lenoir family, my deepest. And I know that you all know that. I know Lenoir for quite some time. I've known him to be a grandson, a son, a father, a husband, and a good one at that. And he has always had a good heart. If Lenoir was on the Yellow Brick Road and had to go see the wizard, it would not be for knowledge. It would not be for a home and it would not be for courage because he was very feisty, but it would be for a heart. He had a beautiful heart. He worked with us in the escort security company. The only man I know that got paid for an escort and got kicked off at the same time. And as I was talking to him, and the state trooper was talking to him, and uh, he was saying, Doc, we got this. The only man I know, he holds a record on the team as well for losing a whole funeral. <laughs> he said, Doc, I don't know where the funeral went. Him and Deacon Harvey. Doc, I don't know where the funeral went. I said, well, I'm not there. I'm in Delray. <laughs> and they were in uh, Hollywood. But Lenoir was a good man. And I want to say this in closing. Lenoir dying was not in vain. Lenoir gave his life doing what he do best. As I heard McLeod say that once he has his head set on something, his mind set on something, that's it. There's no changing, no deviating. That's it. But he gave his life. Doing for others is what God would want the rest of us to do. I know it sounds bad, but we have to do what God tells us to do. God bless you. God love you. And I approve this message. Help me thank God for all of those wonderful reflections. We have many public officials with us on today, and uh, some of them are scheduled to speak. Uh, all of them are not 
scheduled to speak uh, and we want to acknowledge them. In fact, I'd like all public officials to stand, all public officials, if you would stand so that we can thank God for you. Come on, you can do better than that. We have Mayor Levine, uh, Daniela Levine Cava. We have Mayor John Taylor of the city of Opelanka. We have Mayor Alex Desome of the city of North Miami. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Steve Gallon from the Miami-Dade School Board. Dr. Robin Starks, Assistant Chief of Police, Opelanka, Florida. Uh, Sister Barbara Sweet, who is representing Mayor Francis Suarez, the city of Miami, Councilwoman uh, Linda Julian, Miami Gardens, city of Miami Gardens. Commissioner Joseph Kelly, City of Opelanka, Director Sharia Green, Miami-Dade Corrections. Amen. Chief Sharice Gauz, City of North Miami Police Department. Uh, Chief Kenneth Offrey, uh, that's the uh, Miami City of Opelanka Police Department. And then, of course, we have 5,000 role models present, Brother Paul Wilson and Brother Dante Starks and others. Uh, here's who's coming up to speak as it relates to our public officials that are present. And we're going to do that now. We have all the way from Washington, D.C. Uh, with us, the United States Senator Rick Scott will come. Senator Rick Scott, okay, his office will come. You may come now. And uh, after Senator Rick Scott... Mayor Kava and uh, Chairman Oliver Gilbert uh, will come together and all of the council persons from Miami-Dade County may join. All the commissioners may join the mayor as they come and the chairperson. And then Mayor John Taylor will come, city of Opelaka, and their Mayor Alex Desome will come from the city of North Miami. Why don't you give God praise in that order. Bree and uh, children and the Lenoir family, our condolences. Uh, Senator Scott has sent a few words uh, to the entire Lenoir family. Please accept my heartfelt expression of sympathy upon the sudden passing of Pastor A.D. Lenoir. My wife, Anne, and I are keeping you in our prayers during this difficult time. For many years, Pastor Lenoir's dedication and service to Westview Baptist Church set him apart from others. In his work, Pastor Lenoir was a valuable asset to the Haitian community in South Florida, and he will be missed sorely. His dedication to the families of Westview Baptist Church and the community members around him will be always remembered. Words bring little consolation in this difficult time, but be assured that Pastor Lenore's leadership and compassion will be felt by many future generations of Floridians. It is my prayer that you receive comfort in the memories you hold of Pastor Lenore's influence on your life and the many lives he touched. Sincerely, Rick Scott, United States Senator. Thank you for allowing uh, Senator Scott uh, to be part of this wonderful celebration of life. Thank you. As Mayor Kaba comes, as well as the other public officials, we're going to ask that you do not read the entire resolution. Uh, you can read where it came from and then the signers on the resolution, but please do not read the entire resolution. Now, with that said, let's give God praise for the best mayor in Miami-Dade County. Come on, let's show some love to Mayor Cobb. Church, we mourn the loss of a great man under tragic circumstances that are truly unimaginable. And we join you on behalf of Miami-Dade County, Chairman Oliver Gilbert III, Madam Bastien, Commissioner, our Clerk and Comptroller, Juan Fernandez Bastien, and myself as Mayor. And we bring a resolution of sympathy, but more than that, a whole community is mourning this loss. 
Amen. A whole community is mourning this shocking loss. And yet, when we come into this holy place and we see the love that is present and we hear the stories of a great man that not only had endless faith from a young age, endless faith, but had joy and cared so much to educate and uplift others, he dedicated his life to that. It fills us with hope, and we know that this will be a sweet homecoming for a man that is truly beloved by God. Amen. May God be with you. Marlene Bastien, Commissioner for District 2, and I'm here representing the Miami County Commission and in the, in the name of our chair, Oliver Gilbert III, and the entire commission, we wish to express our deep sympathies to the family. Now, at a time like this, we all thinking about the children. When I heard of the news from a dear friend of mine, all my thoughts as a mental health professional went to the children. And I think, without being long, that the best way for us to assist, to support, to make sure that the legacy of, of uh, Pastor Lenoir is upheld, is to wrap around the children. We need, to, we need the village to come together and rally around the children. And I, in the name of the county commission, with the mayor here, and in the name of our commissioners, I'm committing to invest to an idea that the Reverend Jackson mentioned earlier, which was a college fund. We want to make sure that the future of the children is assured. That's the best way we can honor the legacy of their father. I'm making my commitment to commit to this fund, and I hope that every elected official who will be coming around after us will do the same. It is time to act now. It is time to act, and let us do it together as a village. Thank you. Good evening, everybody, and welcome my sympathy with the family. On behalf of the chaplaincy, um, behalf of Pastor Daniel Elise, we're here to present the plaque of honor to the family of the deceased. Again, death is something always happen. We always try to understand, but never comprehend or grasp the effect and the after result. So, as a friend, uh, personally, no, we both own a security company. We were talking about putting together, joining the force together to put a self-defense company. But that's not happening. I'm going to keep following, keep pushing, whatever we were discussed. As for now, we don't lost him. His journey continues. He's going to go to make way for us. We're here, not just give nice speech, but the family. Let's keep you in their prayers and all the assistance they needed. Thank you. Uh, on behalf of the Haitian American community, on behalf of the clergy, Pastor Lenore was a man of everyone, from the Jews to the Cuban to Haitian, everyone. I want you to know he's a very special man. He loves God, he loves his family, he loves his community. What I want all the officials to do is to provide economic development for the community. He wants to see money investment in the community. At the end of the day, we want to see a better community. That's what we want. Education one, business and economic development. On behalf, we love you, we'll support you. May God bless the police department as police chaplain. We want the community and the police to work together. We work, bless you. Merci en pile. Good afternoon, church. My name is Alex Dosome, mayor of the great city of North Miami. I have our police chief with us, along with Mr. Paul Wilson. Today we gather to pay tribute to the life of the late Reverend Lenoir Sr., a beloved community leader. On behalf of the city of North Miami and the city council, I extend our deepest sympathy to the family, the friends, and everyone who gathered here today as we celebrate the life and legacy of a true Miami native, a product of Miami-Dade County Public School, a loving husband, a devoted father, who was deeply, deeply committed to his family, faith, and the community. As pastor of 
Westview Baptist Church. He was also a volunteer of the North Miami Police Department as the chaplain. And he guided, light, and mentored everyone he came in contact with. His life work was Tyus's effort to rebuild and uplift one soul, one person at a time. He will leave a lasting impression in our community. As we mourn his loss, we also celebrate the remarkable legacy of the late Reverend Lenoir lived behind. May his life inspire all of us to live in the same love and dedication he embodied every day. May his soul rest in peace. Thank you. Giving honor to God who was first in my life, uh, my pastor, Arthur Jackson III of this great place, all members of the clergy, and yes, to the bereaved family. I'm Dr. Steve Gallon III, representing the Miami-Dade County Public Schools. I'm just the conduit at this particular time. But Pastor Lenoir worked in District 1. He also worked in District 2. He worked at ITEC. He also worked at Mady Ives, and he was a significant leader and supporter of Phoenix Academy of Excellence, which is housed on the uh, church's facility. So will all of the Miami-Dade County Public School employees, will you please stand at this time? Mady Ives, iTech, Miami Northwestern Senior High School. And over 20 years ago, I had the pleasure of bringing his mother on to be a part of my staff when I was a principal. I never called her Lenoir, I called her Ms. Lenore. <laughs> but we in the Miami-Dade County Public Schools are committed to our students learning to read, learning to write, learning to do mathematics, understanding the science, the arts, and athletics. But at the end of the day, our sole mission is to make sure that our young people become good, responsible human beings. Pastor Lenoir, epitomized what we want in our children, what we want in society. He was a faithful family man. He was a faithful father. And if you engage him in a debate around other issues, he was a fearless fighter for what he believed in. But above all, Pastor Lenoir was a faithful, humble servant of God and this community. He was always positive. Always positive. Always positive. And I had so many instances to speak with him on different occasions around different issues. Never had a negative bone, negative spirit in his body. So he reflects the epitome of what we want in our students in the Miami-Dade County Public Schools. And again, from Florida City to County Line Road, I'm honored and humbled to present this resolution for his leadership, for his legacy, for his service, but above all, for his love. And there is no doubt there is no doubt, there is no doubt that he's having a conversation with God himself who is saying to Pastor Lenoir, well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done, my good and faithful servant. giving honor to the spirit of Christ that dwells in this great house. We honor the family of our brother, A.D. Pastor A.D. Lenoir, and I am the mayor of the great city of Opalaka. I'm, I'm joined with my colleague, Reverend Dr. Joseph Kelly, um, my chief of police, Chief Otley, and Dr. Robin Starks. We're a little selfish up here because we consider Lenoir our own. You can throw a rock from Opalaka to his church. 
That man has served in the city of Opelok in many different capacities, and for that he would truly be missed. He was our, chi our, our chaplain. His church was a, a voting site. Uh, his wife sold Mary Kay to Opelok residents. <laughs> And for that, we are grateful. So we want to tell you, Bree, thank you for lending him to us. You didn't have to. And they talked, he, um, Dr. Gallen talked about if you got into a debate with AD, y'all, yeah. Because <laughs> one thing me and him could not agree on was politics. <laughs> we would fight, fight, and fight. But I'm going to miss him. He was my brother. He was my friend. And he was a great supporter. And we're going to love him. And we love you, Brian. Whatever you need from the city of Opelika, we got your back. Good evening, God children. Good afternoon, God children. Reverend Joe Tuluska from the great Salem SD Church in Pompano Beach. My friends, we have lost a giant. I say we have lost a giant. We have lost. Pastor Lenoir was more than a pastor. He was a statewide community leader and a national icon. He is known all over the place. Whether in Washington, D.C., in Tallahassee, I tell you, when I heard of his passing, I called Senator Rick Scott, Chief of Staff, and I called Senator Mark Rubio, Chief of Staff. Folks, these folks were devastating to heard of the death of our beloved pastor. Right. Here with me, I have a special proclamation from United States Major, retired Army General, Executive Director of Chaplaincy, North American Mission Board. Don't read it all. Just a quick synopsis. It says, it says, SBC Chaplaincy, Law Enforcement Chaplaincy Certification of Appreciation, presented to Chaplain A.D. Lenoir, God bless you, God keep you. We are sitting with you. God bless you and God keep you. Uh, Lady Lenoir has yield to Mayor Bovo of uh, High, City of Hialeah, will come. And I also want to honor State Senator Chevron Jones, uh, or his office, who's present as well. Mayor Bovo. Thank you, Reverend, and appreciate the opportunity and bring into the family uh, my name is Steve Bobo. I am the mayor of the city of Hialeah. And when I heard the news, um, my wife and I had gone through so many photos. And I can't believe, begin to tell you how many pictures uh, where we're doing a press conference and A.D. is standing behind me at some point. Um, A.D. was my friend. And I loved A.D. And I want to share uh, something that I, I shared with you, um, Bree. For the last two and a half years, your husband has been sending me Bible verses every single day. And I, and I called you uh, the other day to give you my condolences and you ended up consoling me more than I did for you. Um, he was special, I don't need to tell you that. But I just wanted to let you know that if, uh, if folks don't believe God's hands at work, and how do you explain a black pastor and a Cuban street kid having a friendship? I have no idea. God bless you, and thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Amen. God bless you. Listen, I have a question for you. We're going to move on. Uh, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to do something a little different, and I need your patience. How many of you in this room love this family? If you love this family, you will understand what we're getting ready to do. I want all of his children to stand. I want all of his four beautiful children to stand. And I want you all to turn around and look at these people that love your daddy. Turn around, turn around. This is a little different and uh, it's a little different because it's necessary. Uh, I think the media team has a graphic uh, from, uh, from Lady Bree. You have a graphic with the picture on it that has Zale information. Do you have that? Do we have that, Pastor? Do we have that? Do we have it? We have it. We have it media somewhere. Listen, listen, while they find this graphic, here's, here's what we want to do very quickly. Here's what we want to do very quickly. Uh, 
We want to be a blessing to this wife and children. And it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. There are many pastors here. There are many public servants here. There are many leaders here. And love is what love does. Uh, it would be a sad commentary and a terrible indictment for us to leave this ceremony today and not sow some kind of seed into helping this family. I'm going to ask, I need uh, Dr. W.J. Gaskins come. Uh, W.J. yes sir please, come. You handle money on the state level. I need some trustworthy hands. Uh, and, and I need, and I need uh, Pastor Thompson has asked me to invite Deacon Blocker and Deacon Kemp to join him. Please, please, just come. Just come. Now, here's what we want to do, very quickly, very simple, very simple, very simple. Have we found the, have we found the Zale graphic? Where is it? Where? Oh, it's on the screen. Okay, all right, good. Uh, the Zale information is there, 786-346-8066. Uh, that's to Shabrikia, Shabrishia, I call her Bree, Lenoir. Uh, we want every person that will sow a $100 seed to do that, to do that today. And I want pastors that agree to do that to stand. If you don't want to sow it electronically, these brothers are going to spread out. If somebody can get me baskets from Antioch, Somebody could get me baskets. If you're writing a check, write it out to Sabrikia Lenoir. If you Bree Shea. Can Bree work? Will Bree work? Would a bank take Bree? Do Bree. Bree Lenoir. Bree Bree Lenoir. Uh, and if you do not have the $100 seat, those of you that have the $100 seats, come now. Come on. Come on, be a blessing. Come on, be a blessing. Brother, and if you can spread out for me, I need somebody on the other side. No, no, no. Stay up front. They're going to come to you. They're going to come to you. All right, just start bringing your seeds now. Just start bringing your seeds. And if you're doing it electronic, just wave your phone. Come on. You may not have the 100. Thank you, brothers. Thank you. Thank you. You may not have the $100 seed, but whatever you have, bring it. Please be a blessing to this family. Come on, these children. Three, three. I thank you. Some of us are doing more than 100. But we want to at least do that to be a blessing. Thank you, Scott. I'll see you. Thank you, McLeod. I'll see you. All right, give us, give, us some, give us some moving music, please, for just a moment. Just give us about eight minutes. We'll be done with this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please give us some music. Please give us some music. Thank you, Dr. Kelly. I see you. Please come from wherever you are. I see you, Reverend. Come from wherever you are. Please bring a gift. Sow a seed to this family. At least you can feel good about being a blessing to the family. At least you can feel good about being a blessing to the family. Thank you, pastors. Everybody can participate. Come on, just bring it from wherever you are. Come on, bring a seed to help these children. Come on. Thank you, Mayor Taylor. It's the right thing to do. Thank you, Dr. Jack. Thank you, Dr. Jackson. $500. I'm doing $500. Some of the others are doing more than $100. Come on, bring your seed, bring it. Come on, help be a blessing to this family. $500 to White Jackson, Richardson Funeral Home. Thank you, man. Thank you. Dave United Association, $1,000. This is wonderful. You can feel good about this. This is wonderful. You're helping this family. They need it. This is what we do as clergy. That's what we do. We help widows. We help children. Oh, God. 
Agape, Agape is given $1,000. Thank you, Reverend Jose Hernandez. Double A, Triple C, the city and the county are giving $3,000 to this family. Father, we thank you. We pray in the name of Jesus that you would bless this so it would be a blessing to this beautiful family. We, we, we cannot pay to bring Lenoir back, but at least we can help bear some of the burden. And so we thank you for those that have sown their seeds today. Thank you for the givers. Thank you for the gift and thank you for the ground. Bless it now in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. Wait a minute, man. Hold up. What'd you say? I just want to make sure, Tony, I heard you. United Teachers of Dade, $5,000 to this family. $5,000. All right, brethren, brethren, if you would come this way, brethren, if you would come this way, come this way, come this way so we can move on with the program. Come this way, come this way. Follow the deacon from Antioch. Thank you. Thank you so much. Come on. Do you feel better about that? Give God praise, will you? We left out the Reverend James Bush, former representative, state representative, is present with us. He's coming. Former state representative James Bush is coming, followed by our ecclesiastical remarks. And our first ecclesiastical remark after Dr. Bush will be that of the Reverend Dr. Carl Johnson, the president of the Florida General Baptist Convention in that particular order. Come on, put, put those hands together. To Pastor Jackson and to each of the ministers, each in your respective places, and to the bereaved family, to God be the glory. This one pretty much is a hard one for me. However, I've been knowing uh, Mr. Lenoir, A.D. Lenoir, for even when he was about six to seven years old with Grandma over at Martin Luther King Restaurant. I spoke with him last about three days before he was murdered. He insisted that I attend his church in a meeting that he put together with CFAD, and if uh, Apostle Quick is here from South Carolina, he was a part of that meeting. Is he here today? You here, raise your hand. Well, he, he had several pastors that he called uh, together because they were working on a family foundation to help restore families. And so we attended that, and I want this family to know that I'm gonna continue to work with that foundation to carry uh, Mr. Lenoir's legacy on. Right. Number two, <clears throat> he was a man of conviction and courage. He knew what he believed in, and you couldn't shake him. Someone spoke earlier about his political position. You couldn't shake him, and you knew where he stood. And he gave, when he gave you his word, you can depend on his word. He was not schizophrenic in his personality. You know, some people, they, they smile on your face, they give you, his, you know, they say they're going to do something, and they turn their back on you. But Lin Waugh was a committed to his word. He was a man of conviction. Also, he was a man of confidence. 
He preached with confidence. How many will agree with me? He preached the word with confidence. He spoke with confidence. And the last thing, and I'm going to move out the way because I know we do have uh, the preacher to come forth. Uh, he was a man of compassion. He loved his wife. He loved his children. And uh, I, I just once over, he bought his daughter a car. He called me over and said, I want you to come see this car. He said, now, she can pass by this car several times, but she doesn't know this is her car. And, but that day, he was so happy that he had bought that car for you. Matter of fact, let's just give God another round of applause for the A.B. Lynn. <laughs> so with that being said, I want to thank you. And it's just so much that I can say how many times we don't talked over the last 20 years when he and Dr. Davis and I, we hook up and start talking politically. Uh, Sometimes it goes on for a whole hour. But with that being said, I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity to be a part of this homegoing celebration. And we're looking forward to working with the family and to continue the legacy of our brother, Dr. A.D. Lindwall. It's only appropriate for me to say grace and peace be upon all of you all who have gathered in this sacred place to honor uh, this sacred person and the personality of Pastor A.D. Limwa. We do honor the host pastor, Pastor Arthur Jackson III, both presiders, Thompson and Smith, and to all the very fine clergy, you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and in creation, and to Bree and the family, thank you for giving me this opportunity to stand to share some noteworthy reflections. On my way here, I share with my wife that I'm feeling some kind of way to be able to speak at this service. I know this is my role to comfort, to encourage, but I'm feeling some kind of way, honey, because of this uncomfortable weight on me and this unwelcoming grief that has a hold of me. That's normal because of the great impact Limwa had in my life. So. I wanted to be able to say that openly. This is not something I'm just doing because I'm the president of the convention. I'm feeling some kind of way, but because of Lenoir, he will have me to do what I need to do. And so that being said, there is a tradition in our Baptist faith that our godfathers or our forefathers are responsible for passing down the sacred trust to the upcoming pastors that they may continue what was passed down to them. Many of our forefathers are going to glory who passed down the sacred trust to us. We have a handful of here. Basket is one, Eubanks is another one, Cook is another one, Lewis, who's a part of Limwa Associate. All these older men, these are few men left. And they also are responsible for passing down the sacred trust and the tradition to other pastors who are coming along to carry out that tradition. I say that because Pastor Limwa and I was trained by the same pastor when it came down to passing down to the sacred trust. His name was Dr. G. David Horton. Yeah. Yeah. Hear me good, y'all. Yeah. When I became pastor, my pastor was going to glory, so I took under the leadership of Dr. Horton, and he trained me some truths and some trust, and I grabbed a hold of them. I went on and began to fly with my wings. Then Lenoir came on the scene, and he began to learn from Dr. Horton, and he never let Dr. Horton go right. until Dr. Horton transitioned to right. be in heaven. Right. And these are some of the truth that I learned from Horton that I've seen Lenoir actually demonstrate. Many of y'all said a few of them. They're not just haphazard things. He was trained to do what he was dead. One was the political. The second one was the spiritual. The third one was the social, and the fourth one was the eternal. Limwa was given the sacred trust, watch this now, to embrace the political, yes. to maintain the spiritual, yes. and be impactful in the social, yes. but always, Limwa, be prepared for the eternal. That's right. Because you never know when your time will come, but it is coming one day. 
and Lemwa actually lived out these traditions before our eyes that Horton taught him that he taught me. Come here. Embracing the political. Lemwa was masterful in that area. He was not about uh, something personal. He was, he was principle driven. Lemwa knew that politics wasn't a political thing. It was a moral thing. Yes. And because he was taught that, he said, I must embrace these political officials to bring good for people yes. and to remind them this should not be personal. It should be principle driven. It should be party driven. Lemwa would get up in these political people's faces and make sure they do right for all people. What a tradition that Lemwa lived out because it was passed down to him. Not only he embraced, amen, the political, but bro man maintained the spiritual. He would not compromise his values. He said what he said and meant what he said and didn't care if you didn't like it because he'll make up for it down the road. He knew, watch this now, based on Horton teaching him, when you go out and do things in the political arena and you actually do a prayer, it's not for you to show off like you're a big dog. You going to represent God, bro. And every time he stood, he didn't need his name called. He stood in each arena because he was out there representing God because he maintained the spiritual. But oh, I can't wait till I tell you about and, and watch this now, being impactful in the sociable. Y'all knew that Lemwa was one of the nicest persons that ever lived on the earth. If you didn't like Lemwa, you didn't like yourself. The man had a big smile. Now, I don't need music, beloved. Cause, cause, because, because the family told me I had more than two minutes. So I know what I'm doing up here. They said, brother, you got more than two minutes. If I had two minutes, I'm a man in a third, on a third, and I sit down. But I'm taking my minutes right now, y'all. So shoot. Impactful. Love everybody. Jew, white, Hispanic, that mayor just pulled up. You came up here, that Bovo guy, Bovo guy. Amen. He loved everybody because his job, Jackson, was to do good to all men, but especially to the household of faith. And finally, Ricky, finally, Horton taught us embrace the political, maintain the spiritual, be impactful and sociable, but you're going to always be here, son. Be prepared for the eternal. Because no one knows when their day is called to go home. Lenoir was ready to go home when his time was time to go. Even though it hurts us, it shocked, bro man was ready. And because he was ready, one, I think Gallen said it well, but I'm going to add to it, Gallen. Lenoir received a well done because he had done well. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And nobody mad but the devil. So as president of this convention, and Bree, you've seen us giving you a liberal check from our convention, giving you a liberal check from our church, and you've seen Dr. Smith administer taking up a love offering. That seed we gave you is just an indicator that most seeds are on the way if you need our convention and if you need our church. To God be the glory. Feeling a little better on a human note. I was scheduled to fly out at 4 6 today. I was convicted by Lemwa in my own unique way. Lemwa said, if you didn't change your flight, I would have told the air traffic controller to call heaven. They shake that plane so much to cause turbulence, you would never want to fly again. So I modified my flight. I came here to do what I was supposed to do, not to be seen, but to represent the sacred trust that was passed to him and proclaim it that he was a trained man. And we're here to honor a man who has done well. To God be the glory, Pastor Smith, Pastor Thompson, Pastor Jackson, and to you, daughter, thank you for letting me speak about my friend. Be at peace with the Lord. God be the glory. Yeah.
Listen, there are some cars that are parked to, to this parking lot to my left, right behind the limousines. If you're parked right behind the limousines, you're not in a parking space, you're blocking some people that need to get to another service. Uh, and so if you if you and there are some other parking spaces that have become available now And so if you could if you park behind the limousines uh, You're blocking some vehicles that need to be to be be moved pastor Jones is one of those vehicles and He has a five o'clock service. Would you please do that? Moderators are coming now moderator Billy strange is coming from the Dade United uh, Association Reverend Dr. Billy Strange, you've already heard from Dr. Alfonso Jackson from Seaboard Baptist Association. Bishop Glover, I don't think, was able to be here today from Progressive Kingdom. Is there anyone here from Progressive Kingdom Association that's here? I see Bishop Curry over there. Thank you, Bishop, for being here on today. Come on, give God praise for Bishop Curry. And then uh, moderator Anthony Brown, moderator Anthony Brown from the Atlantic Coast Association. All of them will come and greet you at this time, starting with moderator Strange. Come on, give God praise. With the protocol, already being established to Bree and the family, Mama Helen, grandmother, I'll be brief. Several months ago, Pastor Lenoir gave me a call and said to me that once Dr. Johnson becomes the president of Florida General Baptist Convention that he was going to come over and join Dade United. When Dr. Johnson became president, that's exactly what he done. Okay. I've done his anniversary for the past 15 years. He called me his big brother, and I saw him as my little brother. I shared with both of our congregations today that I haven't felt like this in over 40 years. When my brother, my oldest brother transitioned when I was 18 and he was 27. This is the first time I felt this extent of hurt and pain. Even burying my mom and dad was not as painful as this. So I want to say thank you to God for allowing him to cross my life. I want to ask those members that are here from the Dade United Association to please stand to your feet. All of Dade United that is here. Amen. Thank you, pastors. Thank you, laymen. Thank you, ministers. May the Lord bless you, and may the Lord continue to keep you is our prayer. Thank you. Church, amen. 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 I am Reverend Anthony Brown, President of the Ministers of Deacon Union of the Atlantic Coast. Our moderator is Reverend Glenn Miller, Miller, Reverend Glenn Miller, pastor of the Bright Star Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, we are standing representing the Atlantic Coast Missionary Baptist Association, but also as Len Wall being a friend of mine, uh, I'm not going to say much, much as already, already have been, been said. Uh, but he was a friend of mine. We talked, the last time we talked, we was talking about our summer, what we were going to do in the summer programs. Um, I want to say this. A friend doesn't have to always talk every day. Some of your best friends are ones you don't talk to every day. And him and I would call every so often and talk about certain, certain things. 
And so I just want to leave the family and all of us uh, with these words that you can find comfort in God because God is the God of all comfort. And remember that physical death is just an event. It's not the destination. It's only an event. Uh, pray God's continual blessing and healing upon you all that God will hear you in the midst of this transitional period that you must go through. But believe me, God will see you, see you through. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, my brothers and my sisters. We've, uh, you've been patient and it's time to hear from the Lord. Uh, let me just add to that list and I don't mind doing that if somebody else wanna add. Uh, Pastor Lorenzo Johnson uh, from his organization, $10,000 to the family. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and I'm told that others that are streaming will be given as well. Uh, Pastor Antoine D. Lenoir's bestie, his best friend, uh, will be bringing words of comfort on today. Anybody that knew he A.D. knew that uh, Tez was his dog, his bestie, his friend. And uh, Pastor Martez Whipple is prepared to come. And I want you to pray for him because I'm sure this is not easy. But I want you to pray for him as he comes. Pastor of the Mount Nebo Baptist Church, he's going to come and he's going to break the bread of life so that we might hear from the Lord. We're gonna have a musical selection now from this choir, and then after this musical selection, the very next voice you will hear will be our eulogist, the words of comfort for today, Pastor Martez Whipple, Sr.
Everyone standing. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight. For you are my strength, my redeemer. God, I can't do this without you. I need your strength. I promise if you get me through this one, I humble myself and tell you thank you. Let Emmanuel, son, preach one more time. And I'll forever give you the praise. It is in Jesus' name. People of God say amen. Clap your hands for Jesus on today. Come on, I didn't say me, but clap your hands for Jesus on today. While you're clapping, can we celebrate the angel of this house? Me and Linwa, spiritual grandfather in the ministry. Pastor Arthur Jackson, the third, allowing us to be here. To, you may have your seats to... Me and Pastor Lenoir, spiritual father, who has officiated this service, Pastor Gregory Thompson. <laughs> to can't have a service in Miami without Uncle G. <laughs> Thank God for our co-host on today. Dr. Gaston Smith. And to three of my good favorite uncles, um, Bishop Cooper, Church God in Christ, Upper Room, Pastor Wayne Richardson, Greater Love. And then I know that Westview is going to be all right. Because you have a wonderful moderator who is dear to me, who've known me since I was in my dad's quiver. None other than Dr. Billy Strange, who's going to make sure that Westview do right by Lady Bree and these children. And so I thank God for him. I would be remiss to all of you pastors and preachers of the gospel, male and female. I'd be remiss if I don't acknowledge Lenoir's neighbor, who he loved so much, and that's none other than Bishop Victor T. Curry. Come on, y'all do better than that. They was great neighbors and Bishop looked out for him. We honor you. And to Dr. Billy Baskin and his lovely wife, Dr. Walt Richardson, all of you, my Heavenly Father children, it's good to be here. Uh, me and Linwa will sit with our wives and we will always talk about this day. And um, we had an agreement. And that agreement was that whoever leave here first will be responsible for the wife and children. And so, uh, Father McGee, since I thought I would leave first, I agreed to that. But now I have three of my own and I got four more children. Seven kids. And I got Bree. And I got Ashley. And that's four, five, that's 
six women. So y'all pray for me. It's going to be a journey. I want to lift up a scripture that reflects on the life and legacy of Pastor Lenoir. Matthew 25, right. verse 21. His Lord said unto him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou has been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Grass withered or flower faded, but the word of our Lord shall forever stand. For the next 13 minutes, I want to talk from these words when faithfulness pays off. When faithfulness pays off. I'm a living witness that when you are faithful to God, God will be faithful to you. Faithfulness requires, Dr. Kelly, commitment, consistency, and having compassion. And so in our text, Jesus is giving us a parable concerning talents. Whenever God has given you a talent, it is wisely that you use it not for self-gain, but you use it for the glory of God. How you handle your now has a lot to do with how your future will look. If you can't be grateful for the little, you cannot expect God to give you more. That's why Jabez made a request to God that he was asking him, Antoine, to enlarge his territory. And God honored his request, not so much because of him asking, but he honored his request because God knew that Jabez was faithful. And at the same time, he knew how to handle what God had already given him. And when you are faithful to God, payoff day will come. Luke 6, 38 says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measures, press down, shake it together, run it over, shall men give unto your bosom. You, you can't expect much when you are not faithful. In this life, what you give is what you will receive. And as we walk our text, Jesus shows us through this parable how faithfulness pays off I like this side over here cause y'all got some good energy I can't hear none of y'all over here and so I'm gonna talk over here Griff until they warm up over there and so he talks about how y'all want me to come back now he gave one man five talents Another one, two, and another one, one. Both men with the five talents and two talents had enough sense to use what God had given them. But the one with one talent, he was selfish. He was self-centered. He was stuck in his ways. And because of his wickedness, verse 26, God eventually strips him from his one talent. And give it to the one who have gained 10 talents. Can I give somebody a word on today? Don't, don't think for one minute, members who go to churches, that, that you're hurting the church when you refuse not to be present. Don't think that you are proving something because you don't give. You're not hurting the pastor, but you're hurting yourself. And in the eyes of the Lord, you are... Consider to be faithless and not faithful. 
Faithfulness is when you don't want to come, but you're still making your business to push your way. Faithfulness is when you don't, you don't have it to give, but you still give anyway. Faithfulness is when if nobody shows up, you still show up. And that's what I love so much about my bestie was that he preached if it was just a few members, if it was a lot of people, he still preached anyway. He served Christ and he served his community and his church. That's why he went so hard because he understood that when you give the best of your service, God would not just give it back, but he will multiply all because of your faithfulness. Tell somebody, continue to be faithful. Some of y'all didn't even look at nobody yet. I'm going to tell you again, look at somebody and tell them continue to be faithful. In the midst of being criticized, you got to continue to be faithful. In the midst of this crisis that we in, you got to continue to be faithful. In the midst of messy church members, I'm talking about poisonous preachers, devilish deacons, sneaky secretaries, cold-hearted choir members, money-hungry musicians, untrustworthy trustees, useless ushers. I came to tell somebody, continue to be faithful because it's not about what other people do with their lives. It's about how you live your life. I wish I had a church here. And one thing I can say, let me set the record straight. And I'm, did my pastor go to the bathroom? <laughs> one thing I could say about my friend was that we had something in common. One thing we had in common as it relates to living in this life, people opinions never matter to us. We didn't care what you said while we was living and we sure enough don't care what you gonna say when we go because your opinions don't matter. And you talking about birds of a feather flock together. Yeah, we flock together. Because at the end of the day, when I leave here, ain't nobody in here gonna pay my bills. And I wanna help somebody in 2024. Stop worrying about what people think of you. Because when you do good, they gonna always have something to say. When you do bad, they got something to say. When you're fat, they call you fat. When you lose weight, they say you got something. People go always got something to say. But when you leave the dwelling place, uh, leave it with a spirit like me a little while. I don't care what you got to say. Yeah, I might be big, baby, but it's more bounce for the house. I wish I had a church here. Yeah, I might be black, baby, but my grandmama used to say the black and the berry. What y'all know about that? And so, when you're faithful, point number one, it requires servanthood. Let the church shout, Ricky Scott, servanthood. Uh, 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 it requires servanthood. Jesus says, well done, that good and faithful servant. We're living in times that people are caught up in titles versus their time with God. And the reason why you can't serve it is because you think that your title requires people to serve you. True ministry, grandfather, is all about serving and not being served. My friend knew how to serve. He enjoyed serving. He, he, he loved serving. And, and, and how can you be a deacon and think you run something but you don't even know how to serve, but you, you get up here on first Sunday talking about a charge to keep I have and a God to glorify, never dying soul to save and fit it for the side, to serve this present. What my Baptist folks? 
my calling to fulfill. Oh, made it all. My power is gauged to do my master's will. And all I'm trying to say is that serving the Lord will pay off. I wish you a high five. Somebody say payoff day is coming. I know it don't feel like it, but payoff day is coming. I, I know they laughing at you, but payoff day is coming. I know they saying you ain't going to make it, you ain't going to mount, but payoff day is coming. Uh, we didn't know how we was going to make it these two weeks, uh, but thanks be unto God, he kept all of us uh, because payoff day is coming. I wish I had about 25 people that would jump up and shout payoff day is coming. Payoff. I just need 25 that agree with me and shall pay off day is coming because we've been made endure for a night uh, but high five somebody tell them joy will come and so secondly faithfulness not only requires servanthood but secondly faithfulness requires sacrifices to suffer loss to give up to renounce Angel, or you score especially for an idea, belief, or an end. Sacrifice, Gillum, watch this, means giving to the Lord whatever he requires of our time. Our earthly possessions and our energies to further his work. The Lord commands us in Matthew 6, 33, that seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you watch the sense of God when it don't hurt it's not a sacrifice and sometimes God will test us to see are we willing Uncle Dwight to sacrifice I wish I had a church here People who trust God don't mind sacrificing because the greater breed, the sacrifice, the greater the reward. Come, come, come here, Father Abraham and many sons and many sons. That's Father Abraham. One day when Isaac was a boy, God came to Abraham. And then told him to sacrifice Isaac on Mount Moriah. Though he loved his son dearly, he did not hesitate to obey the Lord. The very next day, Abraham saddled his donkey and began the journey with Isaac, two servants, and wood for the sacrifice. If I could be isogetical for a minute, Isaac said to his father, he said, Dad, I see the wood. He said, Dad, I even got the matches in my pocket. But where is the sacrifice? Abraham said these words to his son, and I'm getting ready to take my seat. He said, P.L., son, the Lord will provide. He laid Isaac on the table, but something happened when Abraham stretched his hands up. The Bible says an angel appeared and a lamb was stuck in the bush because of him scratching his hands up. I came to tell somebody that in the midst of what we're going through, all you got to do is scratch your hands to God. Father, I scratch. Preach that boy, I'm trying. My hands to thee. No other help I know that if that will draw Thou self for me, oh, well shall I go. And all I'm trying to tell you is that sometimes God got to scratch you in order to bless you. And I wish I had about a hundred folks uh, that could give God praise uh, for scratching you. Uh, 
When you thought you weren't going to make it, he kept scratching you. Uh, when you thought you were to amount to anything, uh, he, I dare you, look at somebody and say, he's just scratching me. He, somebody ought to have a testimony like David that I've been young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Not only servanthood. Not only do I see sacrifice, I'm closing because I'm nervous because Walt T. Richardson is in the front row looking at me. But but thirdly, God will secure you. It's in verse 21. Because of your faithfulness. He says, I will make you ruler over many things. Enter thou unto the joy of the Lord. And so when God secures you, he won't allow you to lack for anything. And so, because of salvation, we are secured. And that's what God did on April the 6th, 2024. He secured 80 Lenoir. Paul said it best to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Saints don't die, but they just sleep away. And so this is not final because uh, eventually Gabriel is going to blow the trumpet. And uh, those who are resting mm -hmm, shall rise again. Oh Lord, and we will be caught up with a cloud of witnesses to meet the Lord in the air. I wish you would jump up on your feet and shout, that's good news. I got a few people over here, let me work this side. I said when we get to heaven, we going to be caught up in the air to see Lenoir again. And so my brothers, I'm closing now. I want to be ready. When he calls my name, we will be going to a place where the wicked will cease from troubling and the weary will be at rest. We go into a place. Come on, push me, Brazen. Uh, where there's no more pain. Uh, we go into a place uh, where there'll be no more suffering. Uh, we go into a place uh, where there'll be no more tears. Uh, we go into a place uh, where there'll be no more lying. Uh, we go in to a place uh, where there'll be no more fighting. Uh, for we know uh, that if this earthly tent uh, we live in uh, is destroyed. Uh, we have uh, a building uh, from God, uh, an eternal house uh, in heaven, uh, not built by humans. Uh, and so as I close, uh, I wanna say uh, to my bestie, uh, take your rest uh, because God uh, love you best. Uh, Lenoir, thank you for being a good friend. You fought a great fight. You finished your course. You kept the faith. And I don't know how you feel about it, but when God gets ready to call me home, I don't know when I'm gonna take my last breath. But Lenoir, you did so much for me. 
but do me one more favor, friend. Uh, save us a seat for me. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all uh, the world go free. Uh, there is uh, a cross uh, for everyone. Uh, there is uh, a cross uh, uh, for me. Uh, I'm closing now. Uh, y'all know the story. They hung him high. I got to take him there, y'all. That's what he wanted. Scratch. Stretched him wide. He bowed his head. They pierced him in the side. Blood and water came from the side. That's why Isaiah says he was wounded for my transgressions. Oh, he was bruised. For my iniquities, uh, the chastisement uh, of our peace uh, was upon him, uh, and with his stripes, and with his stripes, uh, if you got the Holy Ghost, touch three people, tell them, I'm healed, delivered, and set free. Uh, can I ask a question, Bishop Holtz? Uh, what can... Uh, What's away my sins? Oh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole, whole again? Somebody shout nothing but the blood. I'm closing now, but I want to tell my sister. I want to tell my children, uh, be not dismayed. Uh, whatever, 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 whatever betide you, uh, God will. God will. Say somebody by the head and say, we've been made. For a night, please give us give us five minutes we got three things to do and I promise we'll don't let you go but before we go listen after such a powerful word after all of the beautiful reflections that were given today after the songs of praise that we heard today it's only operable it's only right that we give somebody an opportunity to come to Christ. It would be an indictment today if we didn't give somebody an opportunity to come to Christ. The late Arthur Jackson Jr. used to say, we're not on a membership drive, but we're on a crusade for Christ. And then I heard him Pastor Adi, I heard your daddy say, when all these preachers and clergy are in one place, it must be a serious case. It is, listen, today, somebody, Pastor Lenoir was an advocate for the community. He was an advocate for children. And he would only want us breathe. 
to give somebody this chance to walk down this aisle to give us your hand and give God your heart if you're here today we just want to give you a chance if you're here today you can come to Christ just as you are if you're here today we offer Christ to you if you're here today quickly you're without a church home there's plenty of churches represented Antioch is a mighty good church to join but if you don't want to be a part of Antioch there's several pastors represented in this place today if you're here if you're here amen God bless you please don't leave please don't leave very importantly uh, the last word that we're going to hear today is from uh, the wife of Pastor A.D. Lenoir. Please, please give us just a minute. Please do that. I, I want you to do, not, not yet, not one, we're going to do one thing before that. Uh, I need to uh, not only ask you to continue to pray for this wife and these children, but there's a hurting mother over here. And I want you to continue to pray for this hurting mother. Her, her oldest son and this grandmother pray for all of this family as they need prayer today we thank god for the caring compassionate and capable service of the range funeral home come on let's show some love to them mr range is going to come and make remarks and then we're going to make a presentation to you brie mr range god bless you there is a day of sunny rest for every dark and troubled night Though grief may bide an evening guest, joy shall come with early light. For God has marked every falling tear. He has numbered every dark and every sorrowing day. And heaven's long age of bliss shall pay for all his children who suffer here. With respect to Pastor Smith, Pastor Jackson, each of our ministers here present, Pastor Whipple, we come at this time on behalf of the members of this family to express their sincere thanks, their genuine appreciation to you, the many, many friends in this community who have come to share with them during this beautiful homegoing celebration. Your cards, your letters, your beautiful floral offerings, which we, in the interest of time, will not announce individually today, but they are received with love. All of these acts but most especially your prayers mean so much to them. And they would have you each to know that you would be thanked more personally when the time is more opportune. And just very briefly, I shared on yesterday that, uh, as with Reverend Davis, Pastor Lenoir thought it not robbery to come and serve with Range Funeral Home during a brief stint in his career. And so we are humbled today our hearts are heavy, but we bow in humble submission to God our Father who knows all and sees all. And as I take my seat, I do want to share a word I think that represents the person. And Pastor Whipple alluded to it, the fact that Pastor Lenoir made it a point to in any way that he could in every capacity that he represented himself to serve. And that's what we tried to be about here at Range Funeral Home. And so I think it appropriate just to share a word from the great Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. And certainly you are familiar when he said that everybody can be great because anybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and verb agree to serve. You only need a heart full of grace, a soul generated by love. Pastor A.D., we want to thank you for not only serving with us, but for being that beacon to this entire community and all that you came in contact with. And our charge today is to be that servant 
that Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. called us to be, and that Pastor A.D. Lenoir made it a point to be in his life. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Range. Ladies and gentlemen, we will forever remember Pastor A.D. Lenoir. There's nothing that we can do to, to bring him back, uh, but we shall forever stand with this family. I want everybody in the room, if you're able, to give a standing ovation to this wife as she comes. Come on, show her some love, will you? Come on, you can do better than that. And on behalf of all that love you, and more is coming, more is coming, okay? Antoine, you got to stand with your mom on this, make sure she's protected, and more is coming. Good afternoon, everybody. Oh, okay. So, I, um, I wanted to say thank you to everybody that's here, because, um, Immediately once the word was circulating, um, you all just sprung into action and I'm really literally able to stand up next to my kids because of y'all's prayers and your phone calls and you know, just the encouragement that you have, um, um, you have stretched out to the children and myself. So I wrote a letter to Lenoir, and um, this is the first entry since this is a new thing for me. So, my dearest love, my world stopped at 2 a.m. on April 7th when the unimaginable was shared with me. It has since left an insatiable ache in my soul. To be honest, I'm waiting for someone to awaken me from this nightmare. Upon so many occasions, I've reached to call you and, you, and I've quickly stopped myself. What I wouldn't give to hear you close a call in your preacher voice or simply tell me what time you're coming home. What I can say is that every hymn has become so real for me, every line. I find myself leaning and dependent on all of those scriptures we read together. Our text messages at random times during the day are sorely missed. My days have in no way be, been easy. This is the one thing, the one thing I didn't learn from you, how to press my way without you. The kids and I have been encamped with so much love, support, and prayer. If not for that, I couldn't tell you what is holding us up. It feels like you sent everyone that you knew that loved you to see about us, and we are so grateful. You always said that love is what it does, love is what it does, and not simply what it says. It's just like you send someone, it's just like you to send someone on your behalf when you can't be there yourself. I promise that I could hear you or hear your voice when I need your help. I'm missing our late night pillow talks and laughing uncontrollably at our own jokes. The shows you love to binge watch are still saved on the DVR. 20 plus years, 20. Looking back, it was definitely a lifetime. Thank you for not only counting the days, but making every day count. Hearing and seeing how much you love me was always so special. In this season, different people are sharing how much you spoke of the children and me and that is such a comfort to hear. You did not leave us broken pieces to clean up. You did not leave us broken pieces to clean up. Rather, you left a baton for us to carry. You ran the final leg of your race, and now we are charged with running on. 
Every day, I would see you prepare for your day and then get to it. You literally had 48 hours of energy wrapped up in 24. You all, you'd always go to sleep with your assignments completed. Being the wife of a pastor all these years, yes, I can see a sermonic suggestion, but your life itself was your best sermon. You, my dear, will always be remembered as a faithful mate, a fruitful father, and a fervent man of God. Thank you for the strength that I borrowed from you when I ran low. I'm standing on it right now. In closing, let me pull from one of your favorite hymns. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Rest well, my love. Can you please show her some love, please? Please. Pray for these siblings, Antoine siblings, Pastor Lenoir siblings. Listen, uh, we're getting ready to stand. We're going to have the committal. His pastor is going to come give the committal. Pastor Davis is going to come and give a roll call. And uh, there are some vehicles parked behind the hearse out front, behind the, the uh, coaches from the funeral home. Uh, we need those vehicles moved. Some of them may be pastors, but we need those vehicles moved so that we can be able to put the casket in with, with no problem. Come on, Pastor Thompson, Pastor Davis, come and do what you need to do. Committal first. Okay. Everybody standing, please, and please don't leave. Brothers and sisters, death has once again invaded our ranks and removed from this platoon of life our dear brother, Pastor A.D. Lenoir. It has now become my godly duty to commit his body back to the ground from which it came. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, awaiting that day when the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise again. Father, we thank you for the life, the love, the legacy, and the laughter of our dear brother. God, we pray now when the phone stop ringing, when the food stop coming, when the flowers wither, when you all we have, we will realize you really all we need. God, we thank you now for advanced strength. Strengthen them like you never strengthened them before. And God, we'll be so careful to give you all the praise, all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Now may the grace of God, this sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, root, and abide henceforth and forevermore on these, his precious children. Let all that love the Lord say amen. amen. Do not move before the recession.
The repass will be at the Joe Sullivan Center. Uh, remain standing for the recessional. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? All of my help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. And he will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee shall not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is the shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. And not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Oh, I will beg your burdens, you can leave. I will beg your burdens, you can leave. I will beg your burdens, you can leave. I will let you go. Yeah. Oh, she just said you can leave. Say you can leave. Jesus said you can leave. I won't let you fall. You can leave. Oh, I will bear your burdens. You can leave. I will bear your burdens. You can leave. I will bear your burdens. You can leave.